Maybe I'm crazy, but 2019 has felt like the longest year in the history of planet Earth. Am I wrong about that? Mm, I think so. It has or it, it hasn't? By. You think it flew by? Yeah, it was super fast. Oh my God, this was an excruciatingly long year. Yeah. Sorry. Right? Yes. Right? Both. Both. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm not. Welcome to Maybe I'm Crazy Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. Thank you for joining us again this week for our last podcast of the year. Um, very exciting. Hope you all had an awesome holiday season and that you're going to have a great New Year's. Uh, 2020 cannot literally get here fast enough. I'm very excited about it. Um, we're going to talk to TJ Hushmanzada, who is one of my favorite people to talk football with. He, You can talk to TJ for like literally hours. Um, and he's got the scoops, too, actually. Very low-key on scoopage, but he's got them. Um, so we'll talk a lot of NFL with him as we are heading into the playoffs, which is very exciting. We will also preview the playoff games coming up this weekend. It's Black Monday. We will review all the firings and potential hirings around the NFL. I will give myself lots of credit for being incredibly right about Joe Burrow, because I was. And obviously the Browns are... Once again, a disaster, and the Cowboys are not making the playoffs, so we will discuss that. And we'll have the culture report with T, but let's get started with TJ Hushmanzada. All right, TJ Hushmanzada is back in with us. Thanks for joining us again. I'm good. Happy to be here. How was your holiday? It was good. Spending money as usual. Yeah, you know. Spending it's, too much money. I, it, I, I'm with you on that because I'm more of a Thanksgiving person. I did have an amazing holiday season. I think it was because I went to Pittsburgh for Thanksgiving. So I got like into the Christmas spirit right away because my mom has every kind of Christmas decoration you could possibly imagine. I don't even know where she keeps it. But as soon as like the holiday switches, the whole house is like done up for Christmas. And it, it was a good Christmas, but it's very expensive. Yes. And you have how many kids? I have four kids. Yeah. So it's very so, expensive for you. Yeah. They don't appreciate things. <laughs> I have my oldest daughter from college, no lie. She got her stuff from Christmas. She put it in the corner. And then three days later, the stuff was still in the corner. And I'm like, oh, we might as well just take this back. You really don't want it. And oh, then she said, no, I want it. She moved some of it. Oh, well, I'm going back to school in two weeks. Where am I going to put it? And so, yeah, it's expensive. I mean, yeah, it's just, it, it is expensive, but it's the thought, you know. I like I like getting gifts. Like I don't I don't like the 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 paying for the gifts, but I like getting gifts for people. Like giving gifts is fun. Um, anyway, so it's Black Monday. Wow. And yeah. there's been there's been some firings, but the main one that everyone is talking about is Freddie Kitchens. I don't really know what <laughs> what dramatic you can say about it because it's not like we didn't all see this coming for miles away. But I just think Freddie was never the guy. I'm with you. I, when he was hired, it was like, wow. Like right. Hiring Freddie Kitchens. It's the way, the, just the way he conducts himself in interviews. It's not like a head coach. He, he doesn't, con the things he says and the way he goes about things, the T-shirt. You just don't do, the head coaches don't do those types. So he was learning on the job, and he learned the hard way. Well, I don't blame him for taking the job. Oh, like, no. He didn't offer the job to himself. Like, if someone offers you a head coaching job and you're a running backs coach or whatever he was before he got, <laughs> before he got promoted to interim offensive coordinator or whatever, I don't even know what happens in Cleveland. But it's not his fault that he was offered that job. Like, he's going to take mm -hmm. that job, as he should. But to me, it's just a constant reflection of what Cleveland is, which is just an endless sea of dysfunction. And to me, it always starts at the top. So I don't blame Baker entirely. I don't blame Freddie Kitchens entirely. I don't even all the way blame John Dorsey, even though he is kind of the most responsible for all of this. It's the ownership. Anytime you have a dysfunctional organization for this long, it's not the players. It's not the coaches because there's new coaches and new players all the time. What's the consistent thing? The problem is you, you can blame ownership. And when you do blame ownership, for me, it's the impatience of ownership. And that that's where ownership gets blamed is you have to kind of see some rough patches through. You have to see it through. And they should have kept Hugh. They did not because him and Dorsey butted heads. Give him more. Give Freddie Kitchens more than one year. Another sign of impatience. And, and so at the top, they want microwave society. We can put oatmeal in a microwave and it's ready to go in two minutes. Things take time. If it's worth it, it's going to take time. And so... You have to, at the top, have some patience. You didn't become a billionaire 
overnight. It took a ton of well, time. I, I don't know how they got their money, but some people. Do I know. He, I know the owner of the Browns <laughs> is uh, the truck them. stops, Pilot J or something like that. You see them everywhere. That takes time, and, and so whatever coach goes in there, it's going to take time. But Freddie, he he should have saw this coming and said, you know what? I got to really change the way I'm acting in these interviews. I got to get on Baker's ass and let let the rest of the team know that I'll ride Baker. <laughs> I damn sure would ride you. And so that, I think that's where he went wrong. Maybe he gets another chance. It's a learning experience. Maybe he won't. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't I don't see Freddie Kitchens getting another head coaching job, but at least not until he, you know, works as a coordinator a few times over. But it, to me, it's just disappointing because I knew better. And, you know, just I, I, I feel embarrassed and ashamed that I fell for it. Because I fell I was, for it. I, I did too. I fell for it. And it's not cool because I know better. <laughs> and, like, I was raised better than that. <laughs> and it's just not okay. Like, but the, the one thing about it though is, this is where I struggle. I guess this is where I, I'm kind of conflicted when it comes to Baker, because I don't like holding young people to standards that I didn't hold hold myself to at their age. But I wasn't the face of a multi billion dollar organization and getting progressive commercial money either at at that age. When you're Baker. And you have all this money, you know you played a part in getting your head coach hired. You feel like you can't do any wrong. And, and so But like, don't you have to be more I You don't have know. to be an adult. Yeah, like and, and so like again, like that's where I guess my struggle is like does he have to be that if he's really not? Because we're holding him to the standards of his peers. Like who are his peers? Lamar Jackson. Deshaun Watson is a little bit older, but like, let's you, Sam Darnold, uh, you Josh have... Allen, like you're, I'm holding him to the, I'm holding him to the standard of his peers. How do his peers behave? Patrick Mahomes, like you don't see those guys yelling at fans in the sands, telling them to come down and say it to my face. What does that even mean? What does that even mean? First of all, literally he's saying it to your a, face. A lot, a lot of things that Baker has done. It's okay to a certain degree. Like you can interact with fans and talk trash to fans. But you can't, in essence, challenge them to a fight. That's basically what you're saying. Come down here and fight me. That's basically what you're saying. Where do they do that and, at? And so, guys, do I've done that, you're but I'm not a quarterback. quarterback. And, that, and that's my point. You can't conduct yourself that way when you're the quarterback. But low-key, we should have seen this coming because this is that that was always Baker's personality. That's that's who he is. It, like dogs bark, lions hunt. That's who he is. And so <laughs> he makes irrational decisions. Uh, yeah. And he's been that way since college. Yeah. And so I believe he thought we're going to have a ton of success. I got OBJ. I got Jarvis Landry. I have all these weapons. I'm going to give you all my personality and you're going to have no choice but to deal with it. Yeah, that's what that's kind of what I thought, too. But I just thought they would be better while they're doing that. How would you fix the Browns? You need to bring in a coach. That's gonna be hard on your tough on your best players. Who? Mike McCarthy. As soon as he walks in, he's go, he's won a Super Bowl. People forget when Aaron Rodgers got to the league, he held the ball up here. He held the ball. I up don't here. understand the and hesitation with Mike McCarthy. I don't get it. Mike McCarthy, when he was in Green Bay, he had Greg Jennings, Donald Driver, Jordy Nelson. He had receivers that. One game, one guy would go off. The next game, he knows how to get the ball to players. That's not going to be a problem. He knows how to coach a quarterback, obviously, with Aaron Rodgers. He's been to the top, and he knows what it feels like now to be fired. To me, he's a perfect coach for that job. But if I'm Mike McCarthy, do I really want the job now with Dorsey the way it went last year? Well, you you know, we were talking about this before we started recording. You just got to ask for like six years. It's, but, you know what? It's Sports are a microcosm of life. And what you're describing is a long-term relationship. We like, want an investment, <laughs> and we want it to grow by leaps and bounds in six months. Right, and that's just not how it works. Okay, so also in uh, in the AFC, the Patriots. So the Patriots lost to the Dolphins in Foxborough. Kind Your of Dolphins. Inexplicably, yes, my <laughs> Dolphins. Um, I, I don't. I'm okay with that because it didn't really affect the draft situation anyway. And I really like Brian Flores. I just the only thing that gives me anxiety is like I I can see it on the horizon. Like we're not gonna do a Dolphins topic, but I can I'm just just well, I'm not, just travel with me. I can see it where they give the organization to Ryan Fitzpatrick, 
and I'm out if they do that. They're not going to do that. Ah. Mm. But They're the not. Dolphins, they, I play, they I, love to do stuff like that. I had a 1,000-yard season with Ryan Fitzpatrick. I played with Ryan Fitzpatrick, I believe it was my last year in Cincy. Maybe it wasn't. But I, I played a full season when Carson got hurt with Fitz as a quarterback. Yeah. Great dude. Yeah. He's a lot older now than he was then. There's no way they do that. Ryan Fitzpatrick is the perfect guy that you keep for a rookie to learn from how to be a pro, how to be a quarterback, how to study. He's played on so many different teams. So he's many. been in so many different systems. So many. He's the perfect quarterback. And he's only making, I think, $5 million next year. And so financially, it's easy. But I'm w- I really, really, really love the way Brian F- – they lost 43-0 to Joy the first game of the season to the Patriots. 43-0. to Yeah, I remember. In a turnaround and beat them the last game of the season, no, twenty-seven listen, to twenty-four. Ryan Fitzpatrick is. They a, won't do that. He, he. I don't know. It's impossible. I, I. They've done the impossible before. Where are they picking in the draft? Is it? Uh, I fifth? believe they have fifth or. I want to say I'm the drafting fifth Tua. Pick, yeah. But if I'm the Bengals, I'm, I'm just, trading that first pick. Am I crazy? All right, so let's just skip talking about the Patriots. Uh, here's the thing. I didn't. I was not in love with Tua before the injury so he's on his third injury okay before he makes it to the nfl i'm drafting him i, I, I can't he I can't, I, listen i'm I, he's I a quarterback and sometimes you take chances and when you take risk it can be a big reward or th- you can fall on your face. I don't think it's that big of a risk to draft him if, you, if you're if you not moving. Like, I'm not I'm not making a trade to draft him. To draft him, him in a top ten is – The draft is a crapshoot anyway, so it doesn't matter. Every player you take is a risk unless it's like I, Chase Young or Andrew Luck or Peyton Manning. With his accuracy, and he is playing with great players at Alabama across the board. But Jalen Hurts played with those same players, and when Tua got in the game, it was like, "Whoa, okay, this is what they are." Okay, but then why does that? Why does that get? What you okay? Ah, but okay. Everyone says the same thing about Joe Burrow. Like that's why Joe Burrow's not great because look at who he's throwing no, to no, and no, LSU. No. Like what? Everybody ah. else except for me. Okay, so you love Joe Burrow too. Listen, you can. I love Joe Burrow. I'm answering that question. Yeah, people make excuses for pe- for things that they don't like. Right. I can, I can make an argument. Against Joe Burrow, and I'm gonna make an argument for Joe Burrow. He played with great players, and he had a season we've never seen before. When's the last quarterback that played with great players had a season like Joe Burrow? Nobody has ever done it. And so, oh, he played with these great. Justin Jefferson was a two star recruit. Was he really a great player? Probably so. He's probably under recruited, but he was a two star recruit. Terrace Marshall was the number one receiver in the country. Jamar Chase was the number two receiver in the country. He got everything out of him. He's very accurate. When a quarterback is accurate, you have to throw in anticipation. You got to recognize coverage, and you have to throw on time. That's what produces accuracy, Mm -hmm. and he did that. I'm a fan of him. I I just feel like everyone is overthinking He's had great results with great players. There's been quarterbacks that have less results with equal or better players. Right. And Period. it's the same thing. It's the exact argument that people use and you know what to they're say that say? Joe Burrow is not like it's not as good as he really is. And you know what it's they're going to say, It's what Joy? they say about Tua. Like, is Tua not playing with they're good go- receivers? They're going to say, oh, man, I was wrong on Joe. I didn't think he'd be this good. Really? T- I mean, Tua right, like, what, 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 what about what you're seeing with Joe Burrow makes you think he's not going to be good? Tua's receivers are better than Joe Burrow's receivers from a physical Speed, deceleration, ability to create separation. Tua's receivers are better. Well, okay, so he's going to go to your Bengals. What does that mean? So, is, so, <laughs> so, so, so are we all? Are we just wasting our breath right now? Because he has to be that good. I uh, I don't know, and it's I'm torn because I I really like I don't root for a team. I was a Cowboy fan growing up. I'm not a Cowboy fan anymore, but I do find myself rooting for him at times. I do root for the Bengals at times. Um, I don't know what to think. I really don't like. I believe Carson was one of the best quarterbacks to ever come through the NFL. Yeah, you love because Carson. Because I've trained with every quarterback that's still playing right now that we consider the best. And Carson was better than those guys. So it was and he would Cincinnati. never he would never get that credit. And so I don't know. And we were good in Cincinnati, but we were never good enough in all the dysfunctional things that you guys talk about on TV when I was playing, 
I thought that was BS. And now that I'm not playing and I hear it, I just refer back to when I played. I'm like, ah, that, ah, that. I see what people were talking about. Right. But when you're in it, you don't see it. And so I don't know if he can change that, if he can turn that around. I hope he can. I don't want a good player to go to a bad situation and you make all the money in the world, but you're not going down in history as one of the better players. And Joe Burrow has shown, like, I know it makes me sad because as, as, I don't know. I'm talking all this shit right now, but then like I know he's gonna end up going to the bank. My only like I'm holding out like a small fraction of hope because the Dolphins have like 15 first round picks, probably more like five, but they have got a lot. If the Dolphins they just, think just say, that like, strongly, here's like about Joe two Burrow, first rounders and a second rounder. The Bengals give us Joe would, Burrow. Like Bengals, how can you turn that down? They would be it. Well, when I was playing, the Redskins offered the Bengals two first round picks for Chad. Mike Brown said no. And so it's been done before. Now, if I'm the Dolphins and I feel that strongly about Burrow, I'm doing it. I think he's the best quarterback in the draft. I don't think it's close. Me either. I've been saying it since early in the season. And people think I'm crazy. But People think I'm crazy, too. I don't get it. I don't understand it. On that, we're together. Okay. We're, I, we're together. Because I just like, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand it. Did you watch it. the first half? I did. I did actually watch. When have we ever seen a quarterback do literally, literally never? Because now Oklahoma was over. There's like 15. Oklahoma sucks, but I I could swear I seen. Oklahoma doesn't suck. No, now they suck. Because Joe Burrow sucks. Before the game, what were people saying? (laughs) Oklahoma's going to challenge LSU. I'm telling you, they're going to keep it close. They were saying that before the game. Now the game's over. It's oh Oklahoma. Give the man his credit. He's doing something we've never seen before. He's that good. And just give him his credit. And they'll see how much he meant to LSU next year. Yeah. They'll see that. Um, all right. So he hasn't been fired yet. We're still on watch, right? Jason Garrett's still employed. Yep. Still, still good so far. What's what, Here's the thing. I, I've, I've kind of threw this out there earlier. And I don't think it's the craziest thing I've ever said. I've said crazier things. They might not fire Jason Garrett. I was at the game yesterday. Um, I was in Dallas and I just was talking to different people. And and uh, I actually talked to Jason Garrett. I don't. I don't know if I'd fire him. <laughs> I, be so good if he does I, I, I really don't like I just point to one play. OK, I'll point to two plays over the last two weeks and okay. then I'll go to one play in the game yesterday. Like I was like, why isn't Amari Cooper on the field on that fourth down against the Eagles? Right. Yes, obviously. I'm like, what is going on? And then I point to a play yesterday. Did you watch the game? Yes. You remember when he caught the ball over two guys, it was offside, Dak just threw it up. He jumped over two guys, caught it, maybe like the six. Amari Cooper jumps up like nothing happens. He makes a catch and he just gets up. No emotion, no excitement. Yeah, but that's his personality. Sometimes the dog got to come out. But 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 not their cat. And that's why he wasn't on the field on fourth down because it doesn't matter to him. It, you, I mean, this is a, this is a, to say it doesn't matter to him is probably a stretch. It's just not a, he's not a, he's you not name, that personality. You, you have nephews that play football. Yes. You had a brother that's a great player. You ask your nephews first. <laughs> Don't ask your brother because his mentality is, di- ask them if they weren't in the game on fourth down, how would they feel in the game on the line? And they're in high school. I mean, they'd be pissed. Of course. And so you got to have that want to, like, I want the ball. So you so you're saying basically like they was strategic and I'm it not made saying sense. it was strategic. I'm saying that Amari Cooper, as good of he as he is, he doesn't have the mentality that you have to have to be here. You have to have that it's me all the time mentality without it affecting it. And then if you don't, somebody on that team gotta get in his face and let him know, like, bro, we need this out of you. So what so what what's your like takeaway from that. My takeaway Jason is Jason Garrett can only do so much. He's been dealt players that he probably feel aren't fit to do what they need to do. I truly believe Dak Prescott hasn't been paid. So Dak Prescott is not going to get in Amari Cooper's face. And you you pay Dak Prescott, maybe now he gets in his face. Once you pay Dak Prescott, now he can probably lead vocally as well as by example. But until you pay him, he can't really get in a guy. Like, I couldn't. I watched that game. He makes that catch. He runs to the sideline. Jason Garrett pushes him in the chest. Yeah, I saw. 
Yeah. And Amari's just like, yeah, I made a nice catch. <laughs> I know. I didn't. I didn't like that interaction with the two of them. I thought. I also thought it was. You awkward. have to have some emotion. Like you yeah. have to care. He. I'm sure he cares about what he does. But it's a reason Oakland got rid of him because they saw that. It's there's a reason why in the last four games before yesterday he only had 22 catches when they needed you the most. There's a reason why. It's okay to be greedy at times because you're the best player that they have. And, and so he's probably going to get fired. But I don't know if I would do it. If Jerry Jones is going to maintain status quo. Well, that, so that's kind of my, been my takeaway with this whole conversation when it comes to Jason Garrett is that say you fire Jason Garrett, which maybe some of the blame of it d- does fall on Jason Garrett. Like he sets the tone. Jason Garrett is – Kind mm-hmm. of a little bit like Amari Cooper, not a very excitable guy. I'm I mean, not so sure that he. I mean, he's people call him the clapper. Like he's just he's just. Now, now he does clap on, clap off. He uh he does do that, but just watching him before the game, walking around, he like he was getting in guys' face excited before the game. I mean, players seem to like him and respect and, him, and so. But I, I just don't. As far as like it being a good coaching job, or as far as anything actually changing. The Cowboys were Super Bowl competitors when you had coaches like Jimmy Johnson, Bill Parcells. They were they're awful. His winning percentage is better than Bill Parcells. Did you know that? Jason well, Garrett has a like better like win percentage. That's even years. right. That's even worse. So he's you might have some bad seasons. And my winning percentage is better Listen, than Bill you, Parcells. You don't have to force me to say anything nice about Bill Parcells. <laughs> all right. But the point is, um, whether it's whether it's all Jason Garrett's fault or whether this year it's Kellen Moore's fault. It's never any one person's or particular situation's it's fault. The, but I do think that the lack of being able to get to the next level does lie somewhat in Jerry Jones. 100%. Lap. It's a we're in this together type of thing. It starts with the top. And Jason Garrett, he he takes a part of the blame. He has to. You're the head coach. The defense, the secondary, they're not very good. I don't believe they are. Like, if I was a receiver, I'm not afraid to go against Byron Jones if he's your best DB. I am I welcome that. Their secondary is not very good. But do you think that the tone of, like, the, the, the fact that the Cowboys haven't been able to level up is because they don't have that dog at the head coaching position? Like, you're talking about Amari Cooper, like, you got to let the dogs out. Like, what what's Jason Garrett doing to – what? what Jason what, Garrett what empowerment is acting – does he have – in that situation, we, we like, don't what's know. But if coach Jerry Jones do? is still the owner of this team, what head coach is going to have that? That's what I'm saying. So, like, what's the difference? You might as well keep Jason Garrett. This is the biggest problem: is you don't have kids. I do, <laughs> and so when your kids know, like, if I'm on my kids' ass, and they're like, "Oh, I'm gonna just go talk to my mommy," that's what they're thinking. Right. That's the dynamic of yes. Oh, Jason Garrett gonna be pissed. Man, I'm gonna go down and talk to Jerry. 100. percent So. He has to be empowered. I'm not saying he isn't. I don't know if that's the case. But then Jerry, oh, we got a Super Bowl winning team. You really don't. No. You really don't. But going into the season, that's all they talked about. So the expectations were here. When the expectations should not have. Oh, their offensive line is so great. They couldn't do anything against the Eagles. Your offensive line can't be that great if you can't run the ball when you need to the most. And so – They've talked so much, but were they really that good? Every year we have this conversation about them like they're Super Bowl contenders, and they're just not. And I don't think – I think we've normalized Jerry Jones. I think Jerry has just been Jerry for so long. Man, Jerry is a star. He is a star, but that's what I'm saying. Like, we've – he he is – he has – what he does is not normal. No, walking around at the game yesterday, he had a woman that followed him everywhere he went. Everybody he talked to, she's taking pictures. He had a line of people waiting to take pictures and sign autographs. And they just have somebody escort him on over. When he walks through the tunnel, he goes and signs autographs on both sides. Jerry Jones is a player. Yeah, we know that, though, but that's not normal. That's not normal. Not normal at all. But for Jerry, that's very normal. Okay, but that doesn't – okay, just because what you do – is normal to you <laughs> does not mean that it's normal to everybody else. And when no. you look at what, a, what what the what the formula for success is, it's not the owner being the you biggest what, star of the franchise. You know what's crazy is lightweight. Robert Kraft is kind like when they win the Super Bowl, he on the stage with Rick Ross. Yes, when they win the Super.
Super Bowl. But not when there's these things are glossed out of over. The playoffs. When when you win, not when the, not they're glossed he's not over. Walking around the stadium when they need the Eagles to lose <laughs> in order to make the playoffs. Doing that. He was trying to bring the team some pos- <laughs> positive energy. No, we, I, but listen, yeah, Jerry is a star. He's not changing. Like, I, no, I don't believe he's going to change. To get a coach in there that will change the culture, they're going to want power. I don't. At this age, you're not giving that up. It's you're setting your way. So you might be better off giving Jason Garrett one more year and hoping it works and revisit it next year. I, I just – I don't – unless you can get – Urban Meyer type of coach with a strong personality that's had uber success. Who are you bringing in? I don't know. I thought Ron Rivera might have been a good fit, but I, I don't. Yeah, I'm with you. I don't know. Well, thank you for joining us again. We appreciate it. I'm glad that we agree on Joe Burrow. Uh, we will both be right. We're going to be right. Yep, we will. So you make sure y'all play this clip on the mm-hmm. herd and we're the only two. Oh, I'm not sold we on We are the only two who believe in Joe Burrow. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't get it. Like, but I don't, no, low-key we are, though. Like, for, I'm, I'm, just, I'm half joking because obviously there's other people who think Joe Burrow will be good. But, like, every time people talk about Joe Burrow, it's what, like, it's like. It's everybody he's else gets good, the credit. But, like, it's, like, he's just going to be a good quarterback. Like, okay. Because they're, they think he's going to go to the Bengals. And they're gonna, they feel, I mean, if that was the reason, if people were just saying he's going to go to the Bengals, so I don't think he's going to have a great career, that I could rock with. But, like, this idea that he's not. Okay, we said it all. But. Show Burrow's going to be good. Um, anyway, thank you, I'm thank with you, you for joining us again, TJ. Appreciate you. With it. Come on. With it. Quit. What? With it. We about to turn up in this bitch. All right, Heller, what am I winning or quitting today? Let's talk about some playoff matchups, Joy. Yes. It's By the way, time. Hallelujah. Huh? Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? I can't take another day <laughs> of a full slate of NFL games. I love the NFL, don't get me wrong. But at this point in the season, if you're in the biz. A couple of those games don't need to be played. I am ready yep. for the playoffs. And I don't want to hear nothing about expanding the regular season. Please. That or the college football playoffs, which we'll get to. Uh, just, I I'm keeping my phone here in case Jason Garrett gets fired. Anyway, oh, um, just keep an eye on it. And he's not going to happen for a couple weeks. But um, Okay, so first game up, we got Bills at Texans. Mm. Uh, 10 and 6 Bills at the 10 and 6 Texans. Uh, the bill, the Texans are favored. I'm gonna take the Bills for funsy. Bills win this game. Win it or quit it. I'm gonna quit it, but I do think they like cover. They are Texans are favored by three mm-hmm. right now, according to Fox Bets. I, I, I mean, like I just, I'm gonna go in a game like this. I'm gonna go with the quarterback, and I like Deshaun Watson more than you know. I, I like Deshaun Josh Watson Z- one or less sacked. A game to Sean Watson. Yes. Well, that's really what it's going to depend on. Because uh, as we know, the Texans definitely struggle when Sean Watson gets sacked a lot. Listen, uh, Sean McDermott probably, uh, I mean, is definitely a coach of the year candidate. I think Kyle Shanahan is going to get it. But like. Hell yeah. Uh, and it's deservedly so. Um, so. I don't say that as a shot. Like, But there are some other great candidates out there this year. Um, I think Mike Tomlin should get some votes. I mean. Flores. I think, you know. I do think, look, Flores had an incredible year. It's probably a stretch to say he should get votes, but, you know, I wouldn't be mad at it. Anyway, the point is, <laughs> when it comes down to if Deshaun Watson is not on, not getting sacked a lot, then I'm going to go with the Texans. I just I, I, I like him more in big clutch moments. The Bills have had an incredible season. I, I'm, I guess I'm just not 100% ready to believe in them in this spot and on the road in Houston, um, which probably means they will win because my picks lately have been abysmal. But <laughs> I'm going to take them to cover. I just think Houston wins this game. Yeah, I like uh, Josh Allen's moxie. See what he can do. Uh, all right. He's been a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. He didn't get worse, which was good. Yeah. Um, all right. The second game Saturday. It's a full AFC slate on Saturday. Saturday football, which is always a little weird. Uh, we got Titans at Patriots. Uh, student at Sensei. Um, Vrabel, Belichick, the matchup everyone's looking for in this game. Titans are get five points. Patriots are favored by five because they're at home. Uh, I mean, I got the Patriots because I'm not a lunatic. Yeah, I also the Patriots because I'm not a crazy person. But I do think it's Titans cover. And listen, I I did not believe in my Dolphins uh, yesterday. I'm not going to say on me because why would I pick the Dolphins in Foxborough 
at the end of the season when the Patriots need to win that game to get a bye. So I, I don't know what happened. I don't have any explanations for what happens. The Dolphins do this usually, but it's in Miami, and that's the difference. So I, I don't have an explanation for you. Um, it just happened. And the sports world rejoiced I, I, when it, it did. It did. Well, yeah, because, I mean, this is a big loss. And I, like, I tweeted something, and I've, got to say, I've been in this terrible habit, which I'm totally leaving in 2019, by the way, which I, I've kind of started to dabble in my mentions again. That's ending. So you have been, one more day to get yeah, me to possibly respond to you, and then it's over for you fools. I am done. Shoot it, your best shots, but yeah, this is it. I mean, throw throw all, everything you got at me because it's a wrap in 2020. Uh, that is not a that is not a it's not a habit I usually have, and I don't know what I, I have some extra time on my hands, I guess. So I'm doing it, but that's a wrap. But anyway, the point is, people were saying like I'm overreacting to this like because they lost to the Dolphins. Like, no, I don't care that they lost to the Dolphins. The Dolphins are not a great team, obviously. They're 5-11, and 11, but they play hard every single week. We know what Ryan Fitzpatrick is. It's Fitzmagic. At any given moment, he can just decide to beat you. That's how it goes. So it's not shocking that the Dolphins won this game. It's just kind of ridiculous because the Patriots needed this game to get a get a bye. If they weren't playing for anything, it'd be like, who cares? So that's what's kind of strange because I keep riding for the Patriots all season long, and this did actually make me a little bit concerned because it's like this is not a game – where something's on the line, the Patriots don't lose like that in the regular season. So it's a trick. I, I, I feel like it's a trick. I, I feel like I'm, I, you know, I've seen the movie. I'm watching Mission Impossible. We've reached the anxiety point in the movie. I'm like, oh, my God. They might not solve they it. They might not save the world. Tom Cruise might literally die in this one. Dun, nope. Dun, 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 he lives. Dun, 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 dun. Nuclear <laughs> plant saved with the switch the last millisecond. Wild card game one. Right. Better now. So I think it's close yeah. because I do I do think the Titans have been playing great football. But, yeah, the Patriots are going to win this game. Tom Brady is Tom Cruise. Got it. Yes. Yes, that's what, that's what it is. Not every Mission Impossible movie was great. Fair. Some were Super Bowls. Some Fair. were not. But for the most part, mostly consistent. I think this golf pencil in the ear thing could be my look or – it's not Patricia's as long got as you have vibe. actual paper to write you know on. I mean? That's true. I wish if I this had. Was I wish I did more things where I needed a pencil. Yeah, I got one. If you need to borrow it, it's mm. got an eraser too. Um, all right, uh, now we're on to Sunday, the NFC slate. Uh, we got, uh, I guess, Brandon's Vikings against the, against the yeah. World Saints. They are Brandon's Vikings. <laughs> he, um, I don't know if you remember. He knows a couple dudes on that team. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I forget who. <laughs> yeah. uh, Kyle Rudolph. Kyle Rudolph. For sure. Yeah. Harrison Smith, I believe, is also on there. Um, anyway, uh, it's also a rematch of two years ago's Minneapolis Miracle. So that being said, I think the Saints are due and they're better. I got the Saints, but I think the Vikings cover. W- Vikings are getting <laughs> seven and a half points. That's a lot. So uh, I'm going to wit that um, because that's wild that they're getting that many points. But they are at the Saints, so which is going to be rowdy AF. The Dome. Yes. Um, the Saints are a better team. I have not liked the Vikings all year. I've been very, very consistent with that. Dalvin Cook, not healthy, might play, but that would help them a lot. It if would he be could play. tremendous if Dalvin Cook was out there. Also, there's that guy who I got a lot of respect I, for, knows how to make them money, but is not money when he needs to be. I still think that Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback. I think he's a good quarterback also. I just don't think he's clutch. And when we're talking about the playoffs, we're talking about clutch. Drew Brees is playing out of his mind. And honestly, I will cry if the Saints lose this game. I will cry. I will be so upset that I will cry. One, because Drew Brees does not deserve that. Second, I don't deserve that. Yeah, Saints, you better win. And <laughs> and third, I don't want to see the Vikings in another playoff game. Like, no offense, Vikings, but there's just, there's just nothing, there's nothing exhilarating about this team other than Dalvin Cook this year. And he might not even be out there. I think it's pretty exhilarating how much Kirk Cousins receivers hate him. I think that's a fun storyline, but I hear you. I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not into it. But I do think that they cover because seven and a half is just a lot of points. In the playoffs, yeah. Okay, uh, last game and possibly the most exciting, I guess. Maybe. Probably the most watched. Uh, Seahawks uh, getting two points, traveling to the nine and seven Eagles who really – Grinded out that division, that NFC Lease division. Uh, I'm going to take the Seahawks because they're better. Seahawks win this game easily, Joy. Wit it or quit it? Wit it. Um, by easily, I will say that they – okay, so they're oh, getting yeah, two no, points. But, yeah, but, but he likes – Russ likes the dramatics, so maybe not easily. Well, what's easily? Like a touchdown? 
I think they I think it ends up being like 10, but it takes a late it always takes a late drive. 10's kind of a lot. It always takes a late drive for us, so I, it, there will be one of those. It might just be early fourth. I'm also I mean? with it that they I'm with, I'm with you that they win. Um look, Eagles great story this year. Can't say anything bad about the Eagles this year. What Carson Wentz has been able to do is dramatic cuz I'm not even the biggest Carson Wentz fan. On the field, okay. I always feel like I have to say that because people are like, "But he's a good man." Like when nobody's yeah, talking oh about, oh yeah, okay? like we're talking about, <laughs> talking about how the he plays part right like, now. on the field. Please stay <laughs> focused. Um, but what he's been able to do this year is unbelievable. So I like all all the credit to to Carson Wentz. Um, it, it, it just there's there's really nothing more you can say about it. Like the guys he's throwing to. None of them have had over 500 yards this season. It's like unbelievable what he's doing. Yeah. Now that said, it is the uh, NFC East, which is just a bunch of nonsense. Um, the Cowboys, I'll get to later, but you know, poo poo. poo. Okay, yeah. the Cowboys. I'm I'm very upset. And we'll talk about it later. But big win on Sunday for the Cowboys. Big big win. win. They but blew them out. Listen, the Eagles. The Eagles did everything that they needed to do, and they should be totally proud of this season because it looked like it was going to be a, a disaster of a season for them. And they made the playoffs. And uh, Carson Wentz just deserves an incredible amount of credit. That said, I'm with the Seahawks. I, I've liked the Seahawks all year. Our guy, our hero, <sighs> Money Marshawn, the logo, Woo! Marshawn Lynch, Woo! Beast Mode, the new face of Hyphy, low just key, powers oh. his way into the end zone <sighs> in such terrific and poetic fashion. He's so back. So glad they had that delay of game. Appreciate oh, you. This is lovely. It was great to see. I don't even know that they lost. Like, yeah. tremendous game. And I can't even be mad at the way they lost. So that stop on the goal line was was just fucking unbelievable. Um, 49ers defense is just incredible. But anyway, the point is, I'm going to take the Seahawks in this game. I like the Seahawks a lot. They are a great road team. So I don't have any you know, fear about them playing in Philadelphia. Uh, so I'm going to take them in this game. Before we just agree on that game real fast, though, do you think that uh, – I mean – a lot of the Eagles won a Super Bowl like two years ago, including the coach and Carson Wentz for half of the season and then on the sideline. Like, do you think that there's a world where they've got the I said Moxie already, but I'm gonna say it again. Do you think there's a world where they have the Moxie to Oh yeah, yeah. Pull like this I out? wouldn't be shocked if the Eagles win this game. I just think the Seahawks are have better momentum right now and have been playing better consistently throughout the season than the Eagles, so that's why I'm going with them. But yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if the Eagles won this game. I don't, I don't, I think this is going to be the best game of the weekend. Um, it's certainly the most interesting game. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I would not be floored if they they won. Now they're going to lose the next week. For <laughs> show for show. Show for show. But no, I wouldn't be surprised if they won this game. All right. All right, Donnie. What's going on for High Key Loki this week? High Key Joe Burrow is that dude. He is that dude. Low key college football, the playoffs, they don't need to expand. They're oh, four teams is good. It's <laughs> good. My records, if we can find a way to get three teams only yeah. this year moving forward, um, that would be better. But let me start with with Joe Burrow, with that guy, that dude. Uh, you know, I just want to say this because you know some, sometimes I'm wrong about stuff every once in a while, but sometimes I'm right, and I'm right about Joe Burrow, and I'm just I'm just gonna stick with that until proven otherwise. And I don't want the first year at Cincinnati to be held against me either because it's not fair. But he was absolutely incredible. And even though most of that game was unwatchable because it was such a ridiculous, abysmal blowout by LSU, which I, I really didn't expect. I expected no. it to be a little bit more competitive than that. Same. I do like Jalen Hurts. I don't know. And obviously it's not all on Jalen Hurts. But, like, they, they just completely fell apart. But... Mostly it was because Joe Burrow is completely incredible. He was 29-39, 493 yards, seven passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown just for good measure. I, I don't even want to get into all of the like records that he set, but he did set the college football uh, playoff record for passing touchdowns with seven and passing yards and a half with 403. And those seven first-half touchdowns also tied the SEC single-game record and all-time bowl record. So I don't want to get into all the other ones he uh, set because there's a lot more. But – he just had an unbelievable game and he looks like a superstar. And I don't want to, I don't want to, I just want to put it into perspective because everyone's going to be like, well, you know, what's against Oklahoma? Like, yeah, in the college football playoff. Like, there's always, an, there's always a reason why Joe Burrow's not actually as good as he is. And the biggest thing is that he wasn't as good last year, which to me is like, 
Aren't you supposed to be better than last year? He's doing it so cool and smooth, too. Like, it seems like he's handling superstardom in a, a dope way. Yes! He's, which is exactly what you want. Exactly. I don't understand. I, I don't get it. I think it's just everyone trying to be, like, smarter than the room kind of thing. Like, right. well, I, you know, I just, I don't know if Joe Burrow's really a transcendent talent. Like, mm -hmm. like who? You don't think he's Tom Brady? I don't think he's Tom Brady either. I said it. Okay? I don't think he's Tom Brady. Because you know what? Nobody's Tom Brady. So it doesn't matter. I don't think he's Montana because nobody's Montana. It doesn't matter. There's no, there's no point in even putting that expectation out there. It's silliness. But do I think he's capable of going to Cincinnati and with the right pieces around him, turning that franchise around? Yes. Is he a franchise quarterback? Is he worthy of being the number one overall pick? Another thing that's very annoying. I'm tired of talking about the number one overall pick. The first per person picked in the draft, it's not their fault. They're picked first. Okay, that's how it goes. Like, Baker Mayfield, number one overall pick in the draft. Was he good enough to be the number one overall pick? Probably not. But the Browns needed a quarterback, and there he is. So they took him. We all know how that's working out at this point, but I also don't think that's all Baker's fault. Like, so who right. cares if he's worth the number one overall pick? Is there another guy that you feel like is? Unfortunately, he's going to go to Cincinnati, who I, who showed uh, great, great gumption yesterday. Okay, so I have no problem with, with him going to Cincinnati at this point, unless the Dolphins want to do what I tell them to do and make a trade, which is what they should do. But look, like we all know he's going to Cincinnati. He had an incredible game and I loved watching it. And I just think everyone needs to stop being so smart about the whole thing. Like, so, uh, let's say Joe Burrow turns out to be a huge bust. So what? Like, right. you're the team that's going to be like, nah, I just think, I don't know. I just don't know if he's the guy. Yeah, don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. Trust like, your just, eyes. Just, like, we're all watching the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Which is why I'm very, very excited for the, for the national championship because if he plays – half as well as he did against Oklahoma they're going to they're going to be incredible in that game I listen Clemson is no joke um I did think that Ohio State was going to win which we all know how that ended I, it was honestly like one of the worst interceptions I've ever seen in my life yeah it was like just him <laughs> where's the receivers where's the, where, I don't I couldn't believe it I had to watch it like five times to yeah. just just absorb it yeah and and I like Justin Fields like I think he is he's capable of making big plays I just it just looked like he just panicked in that moment. He had so much time. He didn't even need to, to get it to the end zone on that play. Like they had more time on the clock. Like mm -hmm. just get another play in you. I don't, I don't know what happened. But that said, <laughs> comparing the LSU Oklahoma game to the Clemson Ohio State game is a joke. The Clemson Ohio State game was like an all time great battle. Heavyweights coming down to the last second. I don't want to hear about the officiating. Shut up about the officiating. Ohio State, how dare you say anything about officiating in a big bowl game? Honestly, have right. some self awareness, okay? Please. I am like lived in Miami for ten years. Just give me a break. All right, nobody, no one wants to hear that. Like from from all of the colleges <laughs> in all of the world, Ohio State's the last one I want to hear complaining. And that for that matter, like you had an opportunity to win the game at the very end, which is all you can ask for. No game is perfect. No game is perfectly officiated. I'm honestly getting really, really tired of talking about the officiating and blaming it on the officiating. It's not on the officiating. That said, that targeting was not targeting, and he should not have been ejected, and they have to change that rule. It's so stupid. Yeah. If you get two targeting calls in a game, cool, you're out. One targeting game, one tar targeting call, especially on a, in a moment like that where, like, it's, it, it's Trevor Lawrence, and that's why that happens. Yeah. And listen, I'm not saying it wasn't head-to-head -head contact, but, like, the game is moving too fast. You, I just didn't like it. I hate that he was ejected. Agreed. That said, I am not committing an extra five hours of my life to watch an expanded uh, college football playoff game. Like, I don't need to see another LSU, Oklahoma, just to make everybody happy. Mm -hmm. the, the, the gap between the top three teams in college football and everybody else was exhibited quite perfectly in that LSU, Oklahoma game. I think Alabama would have given LSU a better fight even without Tua right for sure we don't we don't need to expand the college football playoffs I for one was kind of an advocate for it right before I watched that game and then I was like nah, 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 I, this is silliness like it's, it's totally fine it's good, it's good <laughs> whatever the committee is doing is working <laughs> let's just stick with this but uh but amazing performance by Joe Burrow and I I'm like I stop overthinking it all right in lieu of loser power rankings because people are losing their jobs and that's not nice hmm. we're going to review black monday because there have been some firings and movements uh among the nfl probably going to be some more over the next couple of days but um for what what info we currently have while we're recording this let's react uh the first one Freddie got fired. Freddie got fired. Shouts to Heller for the. That image of like some sausages. <laughs> sausages, sausages, sausages. Um, yeah. So that will be third coach fired. 
under Baker Mayfield's mm. tenure with the Browns, which is not all Baker's fault. Um, this should come as a shock to no one. Of course, I called this month ag- months ago when they started on this this losing uh, thing that they were doing that the Browns always do that they were going to panic and fire Kitchens. And Kitchens was never the guy, but sometimes in life you're given opportunities you're not ready for and you got to take them. And that's what happened. And right. it's okay. I'm not really mad at Freddie Kitchens. What qualifications did Freddie Kitchens have? Other than being on a coaching squad that like I don't I don't having a coaching position in the NFL that qualified him to take this position. Nothing. The bigger picture is this. Baker Mayfield hasn't been the same since Greg Williams left, Mm. which is kind of crazy when you think about it. But he was five and three under Greg Williams. And I look, I don't think that Greg Williams should be a head coach, but I do think Greg Williams is an alpha. And there's some. Thing to that like he's he's a no BS type of individual for better or for worse because we obviously we know Greg Williams history but like there's a reason why we thought that the Browns would be good this year and that's because of how they were they finished the season last year and then of course they have Odell and Jarvis and Nick Chubb right. and then for a while they had Miles Garrett and like they have all these this ta- these talents so they should be great so what's the problem well it's Freddie Kitchens but then again it's not Freddie Kitchens fault and I understand, like, sometimes an interim coach like Greg Williams, like, can spark a team. Yeah. So it's not that I think that he was the answer, but I think his his type of personality where you walk in a room and it's like, okay, that guy is the guy that's going to be the doing the talking. Right. Can change the environments with Cleveland. And the issue with Cleveland has always been the issue with Cleveland. The Browns are the Browns. There's no culture in Cleveland because it starts at the top. And there's one thing that I personally cannot stand, like it just makes me itchy, is inconsistency. I cannot stand inconsistent people. Like they make me absolutely crazy. <laughs> All right, I'm already like, you know, teetering. And like, if you are not, a, if you're not consistent, I cannot deal with it. And that's just what the Browns are. And, and that's why none of us should have bought into it this year. We all did it because of the talents. We believe that talent could overcome the inconsistency and dysfunction in Cleveland. And I never thought that they were going to be consistent. I just thought that the talent would be able to give them a spark this particular year. Right. But here's the problem. They fired Freddie Kitchens. So it's like their 400th coach since the Haslam's have taken over. I actually think it's like the 12th. I don't know. I've lost counts because who cares? It's a lot. <laughs> and they need to hire someone who is – consistent who is proven who is an alpha who has developed or at least worked with a quarterback that has played at a high level there's not a whole lot of candidates out there they apparently love josh mcdaniels i don't love that hire not saying that he can't be successful elsewhere he wasn't successful in denver as we know but i just don't love him for cleveland i i think that mike mccarthy is the guy now look mike mccarthy may not want this job and if i was mike mccarthy i probably wouldn't want this job especially not when there's other openings out there but mike mccarthy can come in sit baker down explain to him that he needs to spend every second of the off season which which is starting right now working and when he's not working he needs to be meditating i mean this is it for baker like this is this is year three this is it this is all this and and i get it He's going to be on his fourth head coach and it's dysfunction and it's madness and that's not his fault, but you still got to go out there and play. Like that's how it goes. That's the NFL fair, not fair. Fair is for uh, fried Oreos and, and, and Ferris wheels. Okay. It's a lot. That's how it goes in Cleveland. The ownership is the one to blame here. That's it. The ownership has allowed this situation to go on. They're the ones firing the, the head coaches. They're the ones allowing John Dorsey to hire Freddie Kitchens right. when Mike McCarthy is available last year. This is this is what it is. Like th- This is the situation that you have created. There is no culture. But that said, Baker needs to mature. You can't be yelling at fans. That is embarrassing. Oh. <laughs> I mean... Like the fans, the fan can't come down and actually fight him. What are you? What are you doing? What are you doing? I don't what understand. What are you doing? Look, I've caped for Baker. Okay, so nobody can come for me when it comes to that. I said that he should have been starting from the beginning. I didn't have a problem with them drafting him. I thought he was the perfect fit for Cleveland. I thought he was going to be successful. I didn't take into account that they're the Cleveland Browns, and that's just all there is to it. And like, you can make all the excuses that you want. It starts at the top. When you have this level of dysfunction, it starts at the top. It is it is the ownership's responsibility to set this ship in the right direction. 
hire a responsible, proven head coach, give them the organization, and let them coach for like, I don't know, three years. Could you give them three years? Can three, is three years reasonable? It should be, but no, not in Cleveland. All right, who's next? <sighs> the Washington R-Words. Oh, the R-Words. Well, they've been uh, in the coaching search for a while now, obviously, but they did not fire the president, Bruce Allen. After 10 years, Ron Rivera is reportedly in as the new head coach, although there have been a few delays in the negotiations. Um, I was kind of surprised to hear that Ron was taking this job. He is known as being a man of great integrity, and this is a very impressive hire for Washington, to <laughs> yeah, be they, honest. They like, it off. <laughs> they fire Bruce Allen, who seems to be very, very disliked by the fan base at this point. And Ron is beloved and is, is, by all accounts, a great man and will be a great step in the right direction for the image of Washington, If aside from what is actually going on in the field. Because they're mm -hmm. not in a good space with their fans right now. But hopefully this is a, you know, a large step in the right direction if they end up getting everything locked up. I would have loved to see Ron Rivera with the Giants or even the Cowboys, but... I don't know, maybe maybe Dan Snyder's, you know, turning a new leaf. Who knows? We'll see. I just I don't think that's a great job. And I if you're Ron Rivera and you have the pick of any of these openings, I don't know why Washington would be the one where you land, but maybe who knows? Like there's there's other factors in picking a job. You know, maybe his family wants to live there. I don't know. But I'm I'm not I'm not super into it from Rivera's end of it, but yeah. from the what from from the R word side, like this is this is a great hire for yeah. them. Yeah, Dwayne Haskins is probably super amped. He yeah. Should be. yeah, I mean this wasn't even a thought that, right. <laughs> in my option? mind that yeah. Ron Rivera was going to go there. So great, great on them. Next, the Giants got rid of uh, Pat Shermer. Okay, so this is their third coach that they have fired in the last five seasons. So they're right alongside the Browns with that, and they're strangely keeping Gettleman. Gentlemen, gentlemen, is it gentlemen? Gentlemen, is it gentlemen? Gentlemen? Gentlemen or gentlemen? Gentlemen. Um, they'll have the fourth overall pick in April's draft, which will be their third straight year in the top six. So congratulations on that. <laughs> they are four and 12 on the season and a league worst 36 losses since the start of 2017. Even with Gettleman, G gentlemen, gentlemen, is it gentlemen, gentlemen, <laughs> it's the best job available. Like the giants, despite all their dysfunction as of late, which I think can be, you can point to a lot of different things for, for that happening. As a reason for that happening, I do think that the Maras are good owners. Yeah. And I think that the Giants are a cornerstone NFL franchise. They are in New York, which obviously is huge for anyone. And even though the media is a little rough on them, I, I do think that they would embrace a someone like Ron Rivera. And I, I just don't – I don't know. I don't see Mike McCarthy there as a fit, but who knows? I mean, I just really want him to go to the Browns and see, like, see if the Browns are capable of actually keeping a – respectable coach they're hired and and allow them to build a culture but i don't know I, I i really don't know who ends up here i just think it's the best job available yeah. but but that will depend on what gettleman does gentlemen 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 um all right who's next the uh, carolina panthers they're in the search right so obviously ron rivera used to coach the carolina panthers he does not so they are looking for a head coach they've apparently reportedly interviewed mike mccarthy twice again i I don't I don't see Mike McCarthy there, but you know, if you're if you're headed in the, if you're trying to build for the future, Mike McCarthy is a proven head coach who has won a Super Bowl. So it's not that it would be a bad spot for Mike or for the Panthers. I just don't know what direction they're going in with that. It feels that job feels more like a, a up and coming coaches. I see what you're saying. Job. Yeah. yeah. Um because he just feels to me more like a Browns or or even Giants hire, but Again, that owner is a new owner. He's very aggressive, very analytics driven. So I, I, I don't know. There's <laughs> honestly, when it comes to these hires, it's like it was Ron Rivera, it was Mike McCarthy. Like you have Rule, Urban Meyer's name is in there, yeah. and it's like now Josh McDaniels is being thrown out there heavily with the Browns. Always. Robert Sala is another yeah. name that yeah. has been been put out there. I don't, I don't know if that's. If that's the move as of it's yet. Soon. I think yeah. it's too soon. Yeah. But look, there's a lot of open spaces. So I, again, I don't, I don't know what the fit there is, um, is either. All right, who's next? Uh, the Jags didn't make a move on Doug Marone yet. Yes, yes. Well, they're the Jags. So, 
<laughs> I don't really know what there is. Well, there's not a whole lot to say here. I they have uh, who? What are they even gonna do? The Jags? Uh, like, are they gonna stick with Gardner Minshew? They're stuck with Nick Foles no, because they have to pay Foles him. For a minute, yeah. So this is not a this is not a good job either way. So I, I I think at this point you might as well stick with Doug Marone because you're you're stuck with Nick Foles. So you might as well longer. just ride it out until that's over. Um, who's next? Uh, Jason Garrett. We've talked about this, but more. we have talked about this um, for months and months and months. Yeah. Uh, is Jason Garrett going to get fired? We know the Cowboys are not going to be in the Super Bowl this year in Miami, which I'm very sad about only because it was my prediction and I like to be right. They made me liars. I don't appreciate that. But I feel like it's a broken record with the Cowboys. You know, you did what you needed to do on the last game of the season. Great. Congrats. But I feel like the future of the Cowboys is incredibly uncertain for the first time in the Dak and Zeke era. And I don't really feel that good about the direction of the Cowboys moving forward. I, I don't I don't think that the current state of the Cowboys will allow for a top candidate to come in and do what they need to do and run the organization because it always has to be about Jerry. Mm-hmm. And that's not going to change. Um, according to Jane Slater, who we love, friend of the podcast, mm-hmm. um, and who's a wonderful Cowboys reporter, she tweeted that a team source tells me that head coach Jason Garrett's contract expires on January 14th. So it's possible we may not hear any word until then. It would not be a firing. It simply would be a decision not to renew, mm. which is a fancy way of saying we would not like you back. Yeah, it's very soft firing. It is a soft firing. That is exactly what it is, Donnie. Thank you. That was the word I was looking for. Soft yeah, firing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Jerry said he's not going to do anything dramatic right away. Honestly, I think that they may end up just keeping Jason Garrett. I, I, again, I just feel like for the first time since Dak and Zeke have joined the Cowboys, I really don't know what what their future is, and that's that's saddening because honestly, I I'm not a Cowboys fan, but the Cowboys are definitely America's team, and you like you can hate the Cowboys or you can love the Cowboys, but the Cowboys are numbers and ratings and pizzazz, no matter no matter what is going on, unless you know obviously. They're like winning two games and then they're irrelevant. But if, if they're even competitive, they are the biggest draw in the entire NFL. And that's not disputed. Like you can look at the ratings. So I would like to see them play well. I want to see Dak get paid. But I I, just, I honestly have no idea what direction the Cowboys are going in. It's exciting, I think. <laughs> I have no idea what's going to happen. I like that. Well, Mystery. I mean, the Lions are keeping their coach, right? Ugh. <laughs> Next segment. Donnie. You want to borrow this pencil? <laughs> <laughs> All right, time for the Migos Culture Report. T, what's the tea? All right, so Kevin Hart's new documentary, Don't F*** This Up, uh, came out on Netflix Friday, December 27th. Joy, what did you think of the documentary? Um, I actually did not watch the documentary, but I, like everyone else who didn't see the documentary, saw the clips of the one the documentary, <laughs> which everyone is uh, kind of freaking out about. I didn't think it was cool, like him talking about his mom and yeah. like how they how he grew up. You know, it's it's always a good reminder, especially for someone like Kevin Hart that's as big as Kevin Hart is, that he wasn't always Kevin Hart, and yeah. you know, like you can grind and you know change your life, it which was is cool. Yeah. yeah, I mean, obviously, like we're showing you know some video of his. Uh, wife right now and they had a clip in there about how she found out about him cheating it goes down in the dms um yeah i mean look it's gonna get people talking like anytime that you discuss any kind of indiscretions publicly like that people are gonna have their opinion of it and i think for the most part it's pretty glass house the reaction to the whole thing is like i mean people are gonna be mad at him i guess but like didn't we already know that happens yeah we did but I think I think people are talking about the way it happened. I don't think people know that she found out because someone slid in her DMs. I mean, so are they mad at the girl, or they're mad that it happened, or they're mad how she found out? Like, I is mean, there a great way to find that out? A more appropriate people, way? I mean, I guess the most appropriate way would be to confess. But all the talk I'm seeing is that people are saying how she found out was through her DMs, right? And basically, like her how she was talking about it, how she was saying how she was glad that it happened because it made them stronger, I guess. So, well, people go through stuff. Like, look, yeah. I'm not here to judge anyone else's relationship. Uh, obviously, that's a horrible thing to go through and a terrible experience. But like, if they're talking about it, like that, that clearly they're they're dealing with it. So, and they're put, they're talking about it publicly. So, I'm I'm okay with it. I didn't have like a an overreaction to it, mostly because we already knew it happened. So, if this, yeah. is, if this is like the first time we ever knew that it even went down, then I could see people freaking out. But 
you know, it's it's a very scandalous thing to discuss. It so is. I but it, was, it. it was a, it was a six part documentary, and I mean, more than anything, you see his work ethic, and you hear him talk about his mom a lot. So to me, that overshadowed everything else. Right. So I thought it was really good. Cool. So Serena Williams is AP Female Athlete of the Decade. Wow, um, she is an absolute legend. Love her. So really yeah. excited. Um, this made a lot of sense, of course, because Serena is the queen. Uh, uh, happy birthday, LeBron James. He was the top male athlete yes, of the decade. Uh, well deserved. I mean, look, Serena is she's she's Serena. Like she's she's in the one name status. Uh, been that way for for a long time now. She continues to dominate. Has a baby. Come back. Comes back. Dominate some more. She is a, a trendsetter. Uh, a, a, a fashionista. Um, she's the best. Like she's she's the goat. And she's the greatest tennis player of all time. Don't at me. She is. Men and women. Don't and at me. <laughs> and I saw that she won 12 of her professional era record, 23 Grand Slam single titles over the past 10 years. No other woman won more than three in that span, which is insane. <laughs> I mean, it's laughable. Like, who was it that was saying um, that, like, she was talking about their uh, like their on not 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 beef, but like the rivalry. Was it Sharapova? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh. What are you talking about? It was silliness. What do you mean? <laughs> it's like the Browns talking about their like rivalry with the Steelers. Like you gotta win uh, some. Um, yeah, she's she's the go. She is. Uh, what else? All right. So Dr. Dre is the highest earning musician um, in the last decade. He's at nine hundred and fifty million dollars. This is kind of surprising to me. I would have thought it would be like Beyonce or she's number three. I saw. Who's two? Jay Z. Uh, Taylor Swift. She's at like eight fifty, I think. Taylor, why are you why are you laughing? I'm not surprised. People, people love Taylor. People Swift. People love Taylor Swift. They do. They love Taylor Swift. They do. Are you not a Swifty? Is that what they call her friends? Swifty. Uh, no, definitely not. I was just the. Isn't she crying foul about getting ripped off or something? Also. Yeah, she should be able to buy her own music. I just didn't know that she was the highest earner when I heard that story. Well, there's not, there's, there's only a cap, you know, this is what the glass ceiling is. See, thank you for that. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> no, I, well, but does, does this any, have anything to do with beats? So, yeah, so they, um, they said it wasn't from music. Um, it's actually his earnings come from 20% stake in beats. Like, that's insane. Don't you just love a good investment? I do. I don't know what that's like, but I imagine it's very fun. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I would love to be the person that invests, like, $2 in the new Uber. You know what I was thinking about the other day? Because I ordered some pizza. Why did it take so long for us to figure out uh, Grubhub? Uh, people have been delivering pizza forever. Nobody was like, what if there was just something where we could order mm. from all the restaurants? <laughs> I didn't think of it. Right? Yeah. We were slow on that. Like Postmates, Uber Eats. Like this, I feel like we should have been on this a long time ago. Seriously. Obviously, if the technology wasn't there yet. But I feel like we should have been on that a while ago. Anyway, cool. Great. All right. Thanks for joining us this week on the Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. You can listen on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and SoundCloud. And you can watch on YouTube or you can listen on the iHeartMedia app. Congrats to the winner of the Maybe I'm Crazy Fantasy Football League. Mike Squad. Squad. Congrats, Mike. Yep. On winning. You will get a prize. We will reach out to you this week. Thank you, everyone, for playing. It was a great time. I didn't win, which is unfortunate. But look, can't all be winners. Um, enjoy your New Year's. Be safe. Don't drive. Are you guys doing anything insane? I'm going to Vegas. I've, I'm actually going to a wedding. You know, I like the idea of a New Year's wedding. I got some pushback on that recently. But I think it's smart because everyone's always looking for something to do on New Year's. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, perfect. I have to make yep. no plans. Yep. I will definitely get drunk. Yep. I will have, be fed. A party is provided and it's for a reason. Right, exactly. It's and, for and a legit reason. It's a legit not reason just to get to drunk. Party. <laughs> right. A real There's reason. There's no expectations of a super high level amount of fun because it's a wedding. So A wedding I amount mean, of fun no, will be plenty. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> any amount of like basic fun at a wedding is a win because like i don't know i don't know about you guys but i don't go into weddings expecting a certain amount of fun unless it's someone i know really well so i'm like yeah. i know that this is going to be lit i'm like if i enjoy myself 10 percent more than i would be like sitting on my couch to me it's a win right i think you're looking to enjoy yourself but i don't know if fun is the word that describes weddings for everyone i've been to so so oh, many weddings. You have no idea. I've 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 lost literally lost count of the amount of weddings I've been to in my life. So I don't. Yeah, I mean most of them were fun. Yeah, they are. 
You just got to make it open through. Open bar. <laughs> well, open bar, but it's like, it, it depends. There's so many factors that go into like whether a wedding is fun. Who are you going with? Okay. What do you know a lot of people there? Length if you don't know a lot of ceremony. people there, length of ceremony oh, is boy. crucial. Is it going to be an extremely religious ceremony? And it's not a religion that you participate in, so you don't know what's going on. Is there Latin? Is there uh, is there a lot of travel involved? Is if once you get there, is there a lot of travel within that city? Oh, I, this is how many of these I've been to. But for me, like the main factor, other than open, I've never, I don't think, been to a bar or to a wedding that doesn't have open bar. But um, the the main factor to me is always the music. I don't expect good food because it's very expensive to feed people at weddings. So like in general, a great food at a wedding is an incredible plus. Like I don't expect good food. I expect some food and decent at best is fine. But the music and the like party element is very important. My friend who's getting married is a guitar player. No doubt the music will be great. Okay. All right. We're well, locked in. We're locked in with music, alcohol, a venue, everything well, is set. Well, congrats on having uh, superior uh, plans. I, th I think it's a good idea to do a wedding on New Year's. And I think it's like fun, you know. Should be. Um, all right. Well, are you guys doing anything? Chilling? moving new apartment oh my god so fun yay P oh packing god, boxes new, new year new beginnings <laughs> uh yes you know what you are you are you are changing the energy so yeah C yeah congrats thank you it is a big congrats though it is congrats. it is a big congrats I'll, I'll take it moving is awful yeah but it is a big move and it's very exciting thank um you. for everyone else have a wonderful and exciting new year's um whatever it is that you do normally i'm on my couch so you know, it's I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be very tired. So there's that. Um, but we love you. We appreciate you guys listening all year and supporting the podcast. Thank you, Heller. Thank you, Donnie. Thank you, T. It was a great year, and uh, we'll catch you next year. Don't tell me it's a bad joke. I love that joke. I don't care if it's a dad joke. I'm not killing that joke. I'm gonna say it to everyone before I leave here today. <laughs> See you next year. See you next year. <laughs> Maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm not. <laughs>